uh, resin changing the color. What and the... Snodgrass like as a person? Well, you know what? I've spent very little time with Snodgrass, yeah. but Kelly and Josh, who are in there yeah, speaking right speaking now, out. so their son Sky Snodgrass, their their son Sky, is is together with Snodgrass's Bob Snodgrass's granddaughter no Sierra, and they just had okay. a little baby oh. named Lucia. Oh. Just like literally, like two. Maybe or three she'll be the next ago. glass blowing. Yeah, like, so she, so thing. Snodgrass is their family. That's so cool. They're, man. they're like they have a they share a granddaughter. That's uh. Yeah, well, they grow great head. resin. Um, they're the regenerative. Uh, there's Josh right there. Hello, Josh. Did you speak, Josh? No, it's just gonna be starting soon, but I can around. Yeah, just come sit with us and talk. Let me shift over a spot, my dude. Thing about policies today, and also um, some of the policies like microbial testing, and how that's important invasive. To, yeah. They're uh, only testing for the bad medicine. ones and saying they're all bad and not really allowing for the good ones. That's the thing about testing, like you test for certain things exactly like e coli sure you know lister listeria which, which i hate to say you know does show up in people's lab reports what are some this of the is, most common bad ones that bathroom you've seen? sops people you can you can fix and eliminate this problem what are some of the uh <laughs> ones that have come up in your lab tests that uh, are we have an not issue had, um, that problem whatsoever we've been pretty good because our qa like people love to hate their quality assurance team because they aren't yes people. Um, they're no people and they say no a lot and they really like are sticklers and depending on how they define and decipher the regulations, that decides how they do their QA job. So we have a really, I appreciate our QA team, but they're sticklers, like real sticklers. So you hate them every day of the year, except when you're getting audited by Health Canada. And then you're like, whoop, whoop, like guaranteed there's not going to be any problems here because our team is like on point. But, um, you know, so he'll do the math. He'll do like yeast and mold count. And if it's close to a fail, he'll do these this math that is like, OK, so we're a processor. We only concentrate. So we're going to concentrate those near failed numbers we just Which don't purchase make them them bigger. because we do our own math. It's pragmatic math. And we decide, you know what, when we multiply that by four or five times, that microbial yeast and mold count is going to be too high for a pass. And then you have to e-beam and do all this other stuff that affects terpenes and could be affecting thiols and esters and, you know, a whole variety of things that most of us in the industry aren't even discussing yet or don't even have a clue are present in cannabis. We're all still talking about terpenes which we really just learned We're about in the last the block, yeah the so it takes a while to learn about all this stuff so you know i'd shout out nick ziegler uh who worked for a long time with yakima chief hops did a lot of work with hops and he really discovered a lot of different volatile organic compounds from 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 just terpenes you know and they went down the rabbit hole with he went down the rabbit hole yeah he talking, found like 1450 yeah. thiols in hops and he's like, there's a lot in cannabis as well. And they're in a much smaller percentage, but they can be responsible for more of a flavor profile than you think. And they can be responsible for more of the modulating effects of the volatile compounds on the cannabinoids, which we're, we're giving right now all of that credit to Terps, which is awesome. I like the lingo and it's hilarious. We do it for the Terps. We do it for the Terps and save the Terps and all of that stuff. But I suspect the uh, the thiols and the thioates and the esters will have their place uh, at the table Flavonoids. soon enough as well. And amino acids. <laughs> Word. But um, California has a model with microbial testing where they're just testing like the human pathogens. You know, the few, I forget how many there are, I should know. But um, and then, and then here it's just anything. And then if you're a farmer, natural farmer, or an organic regenerative, even biodynamic farming, you wouldn't be able to do a bi biodynamic prep and foliar spray your plant because microbial testings would fail, even though it's proven, trust the science, that that would be a healthier product for you in the end. 
or you might even fail your microbials if you have an outdoor crop that's going through a tremendous amount of stress, like say with wildfires, then the plant is gonna produce more cyanobacteria on the outside of the plant, which is actually naturally occurring, which is actually there to help the plant, which can still fail a microbial, which is a perfectly healthy lactic acid bacteria culture, which, <gasps> oh, I just inhaled 50 million of them. <gasps> oh, there's another one. And, you know, like microbials are everywhere. They're there to make us healthy as well as, you know, they're to possibly harm us. Yeah, we definitely know there's beneficials versus non-beneficials. It would be good if Health Canada could sort of uh, discover that as well. And then... Uh, I yeah. mean, Oregon's got millions of pounds of regulated weed going through their systems with, with no microbial testing. And there's no... That's all I'm saying. There's nothing, and there's no one in the hospital like, oh my God, you know, ever since the legalization, yeah, I can't even breathe anymore. You know what I mean? It's not it's not at all a case. So I'm mean, adding it's just and then it always goes back like this started because of medical issues like AIDS and victims from the medical industry that didn't have help. So it was it needs to stay respectful to that herbalist that background, well, you know, because we're changing that com that com that whole composition by totally. irradiating it, or even in some ways, light therapy. I'm sure has to do with uh, degrading the cannabinoids. Seems therapy. to do something. And also, I think that we're really not only degrading the microbes, but we're also like giving the microbiology a bad name, as if it's there not to help us. So we're constantly looking at microbiology like, oh, we need to sterilize it. We need to sterilize it. When once we start understanding microbiology and the incredible dynamic um, possibilities that it gives to our health and well-being, we recognize that they're they're more there for to help us than they are to harm us. So if we're following pharmaceutical standards, which is what Health Canada continues to instill on us, then they're going to always talk about that sterilization, which I understand having a clean product is awesome, but a clean product that just passes microbials, which is the salmonella, listeria, um, a couple of the other ones. I'm just, you know, I need to smoke more. I'm, I'm under, I'm under medic medicated. Um, yeah. So you had a thought. I had a thought. It was, uh, I kind of oh, lost salmonella. it. I got pretty stoned. No. Um, I guess what I was going to say is there's two different points to this because you're talking about medical when you go into the pharma aspect and it's patients and you don't want vulnerable people to have access to, you know, the negative uh, fungi and, and, and bacteria and viruses. But on the other hand, there's recreational. And then I look at the most popular recreational drugs. One is tobacco, which is legitimately radioactive. And the other one is alcohol, which legitimately is the most dangerous drug on the planet that kills the most amount of people, more than all of the other illicit and legal drugs combined. And that's what we're comparing, competing with. So why do you have to irradiate anything? Like, I'm surprised you can't just sell cannabis in any way, shape or form onto a recreational market that already allows a radioactive product and a poisonous product to be consumed orally. And they seem more concerned with protecting children from cannabis than they do from protecting children from pharmaceutical uh, companies and, and alcohol companies. It's like it's so easy to get both of those things. Those are very easy things to access. They're in everyone's house. Like It's like trying to steal your old man's nug was not as easy as trying to steal his vodka. That's for sure. Okay. Uh, one thing that somebody brought up a while back to me was that We've been smoking recreational pot for 50 years. How many people have got sick from that outdoor growing cannabis? Let's, and that's not uh, including the uh, growers that the American government sprayed Paraquat on their fields. That doesn't count. That doesn't count because those guys did that to themselves. I feel like if recreational cannabis was da like dangerous, I feel like we wouldn't still have Willie Nelson. I feel like he'd be gone. He's still here. And I also wanted to address what you were saying, Marcus, is that, you know, to get to the root of it, all of these 
things that are in the legal market, such as alcohol and lots of different pharmaceuticals and stuff that are harmful to our health, really the real root here is that they give us a bad attitude. And when you have a bad attitude, you just can't even make good decisions. And then therefore you're really, when you're a bad attitude, you, you're, you're not a very good positive influence on your community. And the thing that cannabis really gives you when it's grown well is it can adjust a bad attitude very quickly. And I believe it is the attitude adjuster. It isn't is an it? attitude adjuster. So good. Yeah. Mommy's so, you know, I was feeling kind of mad, but can I just give you a hug now? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, what were we discussing? Just, sorry, man. I was, what does Bill Hicks say? He says, sorry, sorry. I, I was taking life too seriously. <laughs> Here, have this. They want, he wants to make cannabis mandatory. That was Bill Hicks's comedy skit of like, they, we should make marijuana mandatory. Yeah. It's like, hey, man, you're taking life too seriously. That's awesome. Woot, woot. I get to be on camera today. This is fun. How are you doing? What's your name? I'm Jordan. London, nice to meet you. Super nice to meet you. I'm excited. Hell yeah, dude. Hang on, yes, Dave. Very cool. Let's sit Very down. Cool. Not what I thought I'd be doing today. Not what I thought. But you didn't think about it. I didn't. Don't think about it. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's why it happened. A little bit more into that. You left an open space. Yeah. The door was still open. Left an open space. Sometimes it all takes. Fucking rights, dude. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, what is everybody smoking on? What's what do we got is that here? More What's going on? Seems like it. Kind of nonstop. The mic is off. That's what it was. But now the mic is now on. Now it's on. Now we can talk about in. things. It's so much clearer when you're plugged in. Yeah, this makes so much sense. I did not bring terps. I feel terrible. Um, the guava was it? The guava punch breath might have been one of my favorites. I think it's smack dab in the middle. That one and the glazed cherry, honestly. Wow. Smelled like a bakery, you know? Yeah. Cherry Danish. Yes, Very absolutely. I can't remember what she said. She was like, can somebody just make this into like a moisturizer? Just want to like bathe in this a little bit. I bought two grams just to rub on my body last <laughs> night. <It was> spectacular. <laughs> How do you have such young skin? Easy. Just rub two grams of hash on yourself every night. The anointing oil. Yeah, come join. My good friend Chris Bennett, the cannabis historian, yeah. will tell us all about that. I don't know that. them either. We anointing just Anointing oil yeah, of Christ. Don't be shy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> London, can you hear me? You just handed this to me. I don't, somebody yeah, took these off Kevin. too. That's so exciting. Oh. Yeah, I can hear you. London, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can. It's definitely just made. Um, like the, can made you tell week. Kelly? This is a nice little session. I think it's can because you tell we Kelly thank you for that because I love that conversations. Yes, beautiful. The Which. The good. Which? Chill. Can you name them, sir? No, I shall not. <laughs> I shall them. talk about mushrooms and hash and all things psychedelic. So let me ask you this: With everything starting to get to a place where, like I said, we're starting to see medical mushrooms come through, where do we think the scene will be across the rest of illicits in the next, let's say, ten to twenty years? Do you think we'll eventually see LSD in a store, and you know, MDMA in a store? I mean, why not? Adults right? should have yeah. access to what they want to have access to. If the black market suggests that we do want to have access to it, then just allow it a place in a legal market, regulate it mildly to a degree, in the sense that like LSD is LSD. That when yes. you, buy, you that you get what you're that's the kind of regulation you're I'm not, talking you're not about. Not like, two you need to be shelf. protected. It's like you know who, you, who needs to be protected? People who drink a forty ounce of Jack Daniels. <laughs> Those fucking people need to be protected, and we need to be protected yeah. from them as well. I agree. We need to be. Protected. So the people who are like dosing acid and two CB and like all the gazillion psychedelics mm -hmm. that the late great Alexander yeah. Sasha Shulgin uh, brought to the world. I mean, oh my goodness, it was Bicycle Day just the other day. Yeah. Albert Hoffman, shout out to him. And like how many people have went and bought LSD just to receive 2CB and have a very, very different experience? Well, like, you know, it'd be so nice like, to it's know. It's good to know that you're getting what you're getting. I always found, found it less so with LSD and 2CB. I didn't see those getting yeah. mixed as much, but I did see people 
thinking they were purchasing MDMA and most likely purchasing a methamphetamine yes. molecule derivative. Yes grinding their jaws like well, i'm getting hot flashes <laughs> next to the heater the next day it's like it's like well then you didn't have mdma because that's just yep. like four hours the last hour is pretty light like it's very clear and a really nice experience when i've talked to people that but, have actually had mdma i'm like oh wow i've done a lot yeah. of math it's not as Whoops. conducive to dancing for 12 hours <laughs> that's at what that was as you might yep. think it's like yep. there's better ways to experience so i'm all for that yeah. i think that would be great that the world opens up i think prohibition hurts people Absolutely. You know, by by like, well, okay, for instance, how many people have passed away in our province from fentanyl overdoses in oh. the last like year or two years or three years? So that's, you know, yeah. that's insane. Very serious. Yeah, yeah. that's that's absolutely bonkers. I think between my partner and I, I think we can name probably 10 people that didn't make it two years out of high school, all due to like fentanyl oh, and yeah. opioid absolutely. crisis related deaths. Absolutely. Like, super sad. And it's interesting how they even got addicted to the painkillers yeah. in the first place that led them to the fentanyl and yeah. and not just fentanyl car fentanyl which is that one is absolutely terrifying. psychotic terrifying that is like an elephant tranquilizer <laughs> that is like a thousand times or a hundred i think it's a thousand times more powerful than fentanyl that's spooky thought it's so spooky like a tiny a grain of sand could like kill all of the people standing here so that's dangerous yeah just a little yeah. bit I'm uh, I definitely like that. If that needs to be available to people, that needs to be Easy. highly regulated. Yeah. And like the dose, like whoever the pharmacy is that's dosing that out, it's like, okay, buddy, like yeah. this is very powerful. Yep. Yeah, I think uh, people should that. give cannabis a try. Yeah. You it's know, not bad. I feel that when you've torn your arm off, a painkiller may be in order. But uh, I've also felt that if you give someone enough oral cannabis, you can actually operate on them with I anesthetic. totally agree with that. <laughs> yeah. I For can't about a 36 hour period. Yeah. Like anytime somebody says to me, I smoke too much, I can't get high, I'm like, <laughs> I know some people that will put that to the test, my friend. Yeah. 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 We can sort you yeah. out if you want. Here, try Have you this. Eaten a brownies? Like, that's, yeah. Everyone has a tipping point. <laughs> True. But I've actually found in working with a lot of patients, which I'm going to sort of sidestep it here, is that um, with patients who have not had a lot of cannabinoids, their endocannabinoid system doesn't seem to be uh, reactive. It might take multiple times. And unfortunately, I also feel like our endocannabinoid system uptakes, and this is just my own theory, it uptakes a lot of different types of toxicities in our body. And if it's overrun or has stagnation from other types of toxicity, it might actually take some of my patients that I find might, you know, might may have eczema all over their entire body, they're, you know, heavy duty liver stagnation, gallbladder stagnation, many, many years, um, even having problems with eyesight, uh, it may take that person you know, 15 times of trying to get high, either smoking copious amounts, ingesting it, and they actually won't feel anything. And it's not until their body goes through a little bit of a detoxification, I've recognized that they do start reacting to the cannabinoids, which is pretty interesting. So I think when people say, you know, I don't react to cannabinoids, it might be that they have some heavy duty uh, stagnation. I say challenge accepted. <laughs> and I have accepted that challenge many, many times. And let me tell you, not too many people who have passed that challenge. I've yet to meet one. <laughs> It's uh, it does it does happen. There is there is the anomaly here and there. It's like the old high school story when people, you know, when I was first meeting people, trying for their first time, and how many stories you heard of like, ah, it just doesn't work on me. I, I tried, I tried a joint at that party. It, it never did it for me. And then up at your house like a year later, trying like concentrates for the first time, and yeah, no, yep. What happened? Yeah. Well, you fell down. <laughs> you had a seizure, yeah. and you puked on yourself, and then you shit your pants. And then you pissed yourself. Yeah. One I've actually gap. never been so unlucky to have all of that, but I have knocked a lot of people unconscious. Back in the early days when Bubble was new and people just weren't, like it was the late 90s, people just weren't used to a 60 to 70% like hash. Like it was just so strong that so many people, their bodies just shut down and then they would kind of collapse but not really get hurt and then get back up and be kind of paled out or whatever i noticed with bubble it was a pale color and with butane it was more like a green color 
I yes. stayed away from the a little butane. more sick, right? People are like, oh, did you greened out. It's like I don't know if that's normal. I don't think. I think, I think that was the butane. White you out, but greening you out. There might be some toxic poison oh, in there that you're not. I still aware. remember. I was like. 15 like first when i like you know me and my friend started smoking weed and and we thought we were like you know big chests we can smoke anything and everything and we're sitting around the campfire in their backyard and my buddy's dad comes out and th he's been around the block you know he was dealing lots of the time he's like oh you boys want to try some honey oil and we're all sitting there like we're all already domed we're like had a couple you know the two beers we had at 15 a little buzzing and i put my hand up i was like oh, I'll, I'll try some bubble i'll try some honey oil and he brings out like a little you know he brings out the little coal Oh, and a pen oh off. yeah, that's serious. And he just has like a toothpick and some, you know, red butane hash oil. First time I'd ever seen anything like it. Cherry he's like, I'll just put it on the thing. You just inhale. I, I think I blacked out within like 15 minutes. Oh, yeah. I remember like going downstairs to their bathroom and sitting on the toilet, the just like shaking a little bit, trying to breathe through it. And then went and passed out around the fire. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a, some dudes from the Kootenays, the Holy Smokes guys, and they created this tool called the mayor and the mayor was a pipe that was like a glass bell over a bent spoon sitting under a torch yeah no it was way before hash master cut oh man this is the mayor this is like early 90s in the kootenays like caslo That's OG. <laughs> uh, yeah it's og these guys might have even been doing it in the 80s i don't know but the first time I ever saw it, I was just like, oh, my God. And how many people I saw get destroyed by the mayor, like heat this spoon up red hot and then drop this oil on there and hoot. And then it had a glass bell that went into a pipe so you could, like, get every drop of the smoke. And it was it was the annihilator. Innovation. Really... Yep. Right. Right on the end. Oh, the coughing was insane. Some people were like hitting it probably at like 1100 degrees Fahrenheit. Like it was so hot. Just roasted. They were like glowies. And then the oil itself was like 80 or some odd percent THC. Like it was so strong that I just saw a lot of people get destroyed by it. I was like, you know what? I'm just sitting here enjoying my hash, puffing on a little cob pipe. Like you guys do your coal thing over there with your. Hot honey and that oil. was in the days of that, you know, there was a lot of uh, colorful liquids coming out of plastic containers mm. to feed plants. And then people oh, were yeah. concentrating that. So then not only is the plant concentrated in whatever those but, oils You know what? Are. Honestly, these guys, no, they, those guys weren't doing they were connected. In, like the oil was definitely from like organic and like consciously grown cannabis. It was just too strong and it was made with terrible fucking chemicals. <laughs> Like, Dude, think of the early like solvent naphtha, days. Yeah, naphtha oh. that you had to. Now they were smart enough that they ran the naphtha through a still, through a copper condenser, and then what would happen was you could remove the less and rud the, the 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 rust and lead inhibitors that the naphtha companies put in, which gave it that green and blue tinge. But when you Gross. got that out, it was toxic waste. Now you now have a like like a a responsibility to the earth. For me, I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to use water and ice. I'm not down with all these chemical solvents. It's like if you guys want to do that, that's fine. It's gonna be the future now. You like know? it's gonna it's, be where everything goes. It's very it's been my last twenty three years and I look forward to it being the next twenty three as well. Yeah. Water hash, dry sift, rosin. Rosin was a game changer. It really was. Like it absolutely made it like you know, before rosin, unfortunately, the concentrate bubble hash, it was just still too rare. Dry sift, that was like elusive to young high school people. Yep. But then you had butane oil, a can, a, a, you know, just blast it through and you made honey oil. You have dabs. But kids were blowing up. Kids were lighting themselves on fire, burning their hands, burning their faces. I had friends with, uh, without eyebrows. Yeah, this is very – uh, without eyebrows is, is a, a funny story. <laughs> blowing off your hands at 19 years old is sickening. Yeah. And so that whole vibe was just like, yeah, you know what? Let's just do this with water and ice. Uh, uh, but – but water and ice, they were they were unable to access good enough hash. Yeah. Butane, they could immediately. Rosin, yeah. now you need a your mother's hair straightener, flat iron, yeah, and, and you can you can make something. dabs <laughs> with a bud, like a bud. Now high school kids have access to like high end flower rosin. That's amazing. The start you know, like when I was fourteen, I wish I was dealing with like sketchy borderline criminal motherfuckers. I still remember the first time I, I like, bought my really first dab, and it was shatter, and it was just like bad butane hash oil that was black Ooh, and stretchy soupy. and i was like 
fuck yeah and roasted that yeah. shit on oh, red yeah. hot bangers awesome. and sent it yeah I'm going to go do Ooh. some hot knives. Yeah. Heat those knives up to 1600 degrees Fahrenheit and then push them. No, wait, 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 man. You got to hit it when it's hat. red. <laughs> yeah, metal nails. You know, we all get to take our journey and I, we enjoyed it while we were there. And I think that the suffering leads to the enjoyment. If you didn't suffer, you know, with those like smoking out of a Coca-Cola can or first time, you know, like doing fucking smoking some shitty, life to it. some it's shitty. Everything. Yeah. Everything. You know, it's like earn your stripes, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> No. Exactly. Facts. I mean, you're 19 years old and you walk into the store and you can buy that. No, Fuck yeah. that person. Dude, and now yeah, I know I, too I, from traveling the world and meeting up with people and smoking that shit with people. Run, turn your mic on. What I'm excited for is my daughters and when they get Oh, dude, I think it all that time. Well, I hate to be Hello? the bearer of bad news. There you go. Check, check. Often your kids it's it's amazing how like my kids don't puff at all. Like the, I have a 21 year old and an check, 18 year old. They were like embarrassed that I was Bubble Man while they were in high school. <laughs> they were like, people, kids were like, is your, kid, is your dad Bubble Man? It mortified them. <laughs> they don't use cannabis. They don't like have anything to do with can. They want nothing to do with cannabis generally, almost completely. And that's, uh, you know, it's like I was, I was at a skate park in Whistler recently and my kid, he's seven now. I've got a younger one too. And he loves scootering. And I'm just like scootering, like fuck scooters. I'm a sk I'm a skater, <laughs> like from the fucking seventies and the eighties, like you know fuck scooters. And I'm all these skater kids are skating around, kind of looking down at the skater kid, scooter kids. And I I'm looking at them, going, I'm like, dude, seriously, like stop that judgment right away. You're gonna have twins, and they're both gonna fucking love scooters. Scooters and were what made me feel old for the first time. <laughs> I'm only like 26, and I remember driving by a skate park and it like. And seven three quarters of it on my like old local skate park with scooters. Like, right. Look at my parents like, what the fuck? These fucking kids. Well, dude, I got scooters. on one in Whistler and I was like, fuck this. I dropped into the snake. I did the bowl. I came out. I did like a backflip onto my back. Like I damn near <laughs> killed myself. This was three days ago, by the way. <laughs> my son was like, Dad, I was gonna cry. I thought you died, but then I saw you move and then he started laughing about it. But holy shit, those scooters are no joke, man. Like I'm 49. You, you so I'm bad when your kid runs up. Are you okay? It's yeah, yeah. Funny. He thought you I was, know, like, was oh, I bad. knocked the wind out of myself. I was like, what am I doing? I can skateboard. Yeah. I can drop into those bowls and I can go up a quarter pipe and, you know, but I can't scooter. And I, it's, yeah, it's just weird to get older and like hit these points where you're like, oh, I guess I just can't do that. And then you convince yourself, no, I just don't want to do that. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, buddy. Right. As if you wouldn't just do everything if you could. Like at a high level, wouldn't you just do everything yes. if you could do it at a high level? I've always said, though, if you could do a backflip on a scooter, that just means you could do a backflip. Well, I did the back part. I just didn't do That's the flip part. That's also just cool. You don't need to add a scooter to it. I didn't stick the flip part at all. I just went back. <laughs> it was a lot like getting body slammed by Hulk Hogan from about five <laughs> feet up onto concrete. He's, My he's wife was... like five pounds and made of a little bit of... Deal. My wife said you are actually very strong because I thought for sure we were going to the hospital London for like a very low. fractured spleen and a broken hip and a it was very shoulder. Yeah, and I feel great today. I got to admit, Maybe like that's what it was. shit was scary. Into, into... Sometimes a good you can hold his mic closer does, to his mouth. That, that is rare. Right, More often than not, a good here. knock is traumatic. Hey, there you go. Again. Yeah, they eventually died. Check, check, check. One, two, three. Check, check. Welcome, Ty. Hey, hey how did we meet? I'm good. Bubble Man's good. Uh, we met the first time in an Embark boardroom uh, when we came to visit your facility. Oh, it was corporate -y. Yeah, it was very corporate -y, But it was super weird because I was a fan of Hash Church. I've been watching it for a while. Yeah. And now I'm sitting in a, like I said, a boardroom in a very corporate setting this close to you. <laughs> and you can't even really say what's up. Yeah. And yeah, it's like super like casual. Like, oh, hi, I'm Marcus. I'm like, I enjoy trying to keep your head hi, straight. Hi. Like, hi. Yeah. And then we start. Yep. And then we start uh, going through. Um, I think you started walking us through the bubble hash and okay. how you guys were making it. Yep. Um, I remember asking you a question on the microns and you gave me a look like, okay, nice. okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, then from there we left, uh, you came out the second time to Kelowna for some ride alongs to some stores. 
And that was the first time that I got to experience six star bubble hash. Straw and Anna um, was the first time that we met. And then that was awesome. I got to go to level 10 right off the bat with the straw Nana. The next day I got introduced into Terp Dips, Terp Dip Bong Rips, which yep. I thought level 10 was as high as it goes. And, and then, then we, we went to 15. Then we shattered that ceiling uh, yep. the next day. Terp Dip Bong Rips. Jack Frost Terps with the straw Nana. Uh, Jack Frost Greenhouse Flowers from California, like turned into terpenes. Wicked. And it was clear. The vial was very, very tiny, and like you opened it, and it felt like walking into a grow room. Like it was crazy. I didn't understand it because, like, I couldn't tell what was in there. And then he picked up the tiniest what are we taking amount, like today? that, like maybe ten grains What's of sand. Today's lesson, yeah, have- will be terp dipping. So then, yeah, um, beautiful venue, very similar to this, is when I think we tried it. Yeah, um, on the beach. Yep, facing the lake. True. Um, right. And then we went for lunch after like, that. Wasn't that super chill? Like we were Dude, the only it was two insane. people in the car. We were in my car. Yeah, it was like exactly like this. Like we were looking out onto the lake, oh, probably romantic. just as That's close. Nice. It was very nice. And uh, yeah, from there it was like lollipops yeah. on your lips. Like I couldn't yeah. lick the frost, Jack Frost flavor off my lips. No, I t- I, and I I remember mentioning that to you. I'm like, lick your lips. Yeah, and it was like, oh my god, like a lollipop. Like I just couldn't stop it. And then that is when Accurate. my life changed. Yeah. It's so is... hard to go back. Yeah. Why would you want to? It's like in you the can. Matrix. It's like, are you that guy that wants to go back and rat on all your friends so you can enjoy a steak, even though you know it's not real? And it's just like, no, it's, it's, don't don't go back and eat the whatever. Pill no, and it was. that was it because um, that next day when I tried this, um, I went home and I smoked uh, Simply Bear's Blue Dream, which is very flavorful. Yeah, very nice. But you could still taste the Jack Frost. No, it tasted like the worst John I ever smoked in my life oh, because shit. I'm coming off a straw Nana. Yeah. It's there's levels to this. Yeah, there is levels. In there's beautiful levels sunshine, we had that picture where it looked like you're smoking the sun. You're dabbing the sun. Uh, yeah, with the with the rig. <laughs> totally. And that's what it felt like. It felt like dabbing sunshine. It was a nice day. Yeah, it was gorgeous. Sun was out. It was beautiful. That's what, that's what memories are made of. Right yeah, there. and then uh, good hash on sunshine. Yeah, and then the next day, we, like Vernon. Then we did Vernon. We went and visited right. your friend. Uh, we did. Celine, we went and visited Selena. Selena, yes, and her, yeah. her guy. Yeah. Um, we had a wonderful time with them, visiting them. Totally. Uh, I remember that. And that then was that was good. it. Then then we blasted through. And that was. And we then went to a bunch of stores. Two days ago when you messaged me. I was like, hey, dude, I'm in Kelowna. And I was Let's do this. With open arms. <laughs> Let's, uh, you know, enjoy some dabs and, you know, keep right? making memories. And do you know Jordan? Yes. So Jordan you and I showed up here together today. No. no. Um, but through we are, a mutual connection. Yeah, we're yeah. both reps. In okay, the, in reps. The yeah. Right. Yeah. So he's with Quest and nice. General Mission. Quest. Okay, and Hybrid. Yeah. So nice. then we bumped into each other here, and just being familiar faces, we kind of started touring around a little bit. Well, I love it. Looking for you. Well, well then he was like, start, "We should start a super band." Done. Done. Well, don't outside have of our other. Skills. Can... No, it's not a. It's not a musical skill. It's what your skills are. Oh, right, right. Okay, okay. We're this is start. better. This is a, this play is an idea. Strengths, <laughs> exactly. I think I can play like the jug. No, no instruments needed. It'll be uh, exactly what you're good at. I'll come back to you. <laughs> Get back to you with a list. Yes, exactly. What are you saying, Amir? All good. Living the dream. Kind of thinking food soon. Me too. I've been thinking that. Feeling pretty hungry. Yeah. Well, did you guys eat here already? I have not eaten today yet. <laughs> Me neither. I had a coffee. Yesterday <laughs> I didn't eat till seven thirty at night. I do that all the Are time. Are you purposely fasting? I'm not purposely fasting. What oh. happens at these events is I get Busy. I get pulled into these things, and I'm just <laughs> someone had to a microphone, just, and then I'm just <laughs> in them. They happen all around me, and I'm just in it. <laughs> does it not happen? It does happen, yeah. right? Like everywhere. Yeah. And like in Amsterdam, sometimes I'm like, oh, fuck, yeah. I just gotta go eat right now. Like just you and me, let's just go run away from all these people. Like, in Amsterdam in particular, here it's nothing. Because you can go eat with twelve people. Yeah. Trying response. to eat with twelve people in Amsterdam is not fucking happening. No. Right? Shove it every, into a cafe. Everywhere's small. Yeah. You know, even if you're with three or four people, it's like, ooh. That is a big time. I could slow <laughs> us up quite a bit. Yeah. 
one other person yeah. is who you go eat with in Amsterdam. Lots of two table, like two seats. Dude, I'm That's telling it? you, I got my favorite pizzerias. I got my uh, favorite. They used to have this really good vegetarian restaurant called the the Bowler, the Bowler Hat. You remember that place? It was a really good one. When was the last time you were in Amsterdam? I have not been to Amsterdam for a while. It feels like maybe almost two and a half to three years. Which is saying a lot because I have been to Amsterdam a, a great many times. Like I would say between 40 and 50. Oh, wow. Like a great many yeah, times. No, right, yeah, those. Not like 10 or 12. Or, that you did, yeah, I right, go to yeah. the cups and anytime I flew to Germany or France or Switzerland or Spain or any of those countries, even the UK, I go, to, I go to Amsterdam. It's what a tour like. Direct. That's awesome. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. 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 What invite you? Oh, thank you. Great. Wouldn't be upset about it. Okay. No, just whatever is fine. Have you yeah. ever been to Amsterdam, Ty? I have not. Me neither. Uh, I've been. You guys to... should go to Amsterdam. Let's go to Amsterdam. I've been to Italy and Greece and Thailand. Is the only <gasps> We've had some good times I... in Amsterdam. <laughs> appreciate you. I... We appreciate you. Thank yeah. You. Amir, Amir and I have had some very good times in Amsterdam. Yeah. Some epic memories that are just uh, only a man, from yeah, legends yeah. of hash dinners to, you know, just great. Great events, hanging out with our friends, concerts, the cannabis cup. Fuck, that's when a bucket start list. Doing these cups, like, is it? Was well, there like the first a... one was would have been like I think 1989, and it was private. And then 80, 94, I believe, was the first public one they did. And then 95 was the first one I did. And that so was I in missed Amsterdam, Amsterdam yeah. at the Pax Party House, the original venue. That's crazy. Super awesome. What a what a what a thing to be able to say you got to go to, you know, like that's oh, that's a, all of that's them, history. Yeah, yeah I exactly. met them all, dude. Absolutely. Like I was like Matt history. Neville, the breeder, and Eagle Bill, and all these real wild characters, the Sensi family, Ben Dronkers, and obviously Rob Clark, and uh, you know Skunkman Sam, and all of those dudes that I looked up to a great deal. And Ed Rosenthal was sitting on my. I had a booth no in way. Amsterdam. Yeah, I met Ed in '95. I've been, yeah, been friends you, right? with him for a very. He was. Wow. He was. It was Jack Hare and his granddaughter on one side, and Eagle Bill on the other. Ed was just using my boot, my table, to sit down and pack a bowl of hash. And it was '95, and I walked up to him and I'm like, "Hey, man, are you fucking Ed Rosenthal?" He's like, "I sure am." I'm like, "Well, this is my booth." And then he said, "Well, then it's official. We must smoke hash." <laughs> and we smoked hash, and that's how I met Ed. That's I love people. that. That was pretty good. I love pretty that. Chill. Good, good, good times. Good events. It's uh, so much, so many memories that uh, uh, this is cool too. We're making new memories. Yeah, the, it's, it's different. It, it's the beginning it's, of a new. You know, back yesterday. then it was like we were all pirates, <laughs> so it was kind of gnarly. Like you'd just be meeting people, and you'd be like, "Where are you from? I'm from Philly." It's like, "Oh, what do you do in Philly?" Oh, you know. <laughs> It's like, what do you mean? I'm, yeah, hey, man, I, guess I think mad packs all the time. Like, 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 do you know how easy it would have been back then? For the authorities to literally be like, look, just go to the Cannabis Cup, get the list of people. That's your list. These are the top cannabis people across the fucking globe that are all obsessed. They're all growing it. They're selling it. They're, bra they're Every single one of them yeah. paid for their trip with it. It's like, and that was the case. And I can say that now because that's all done and said. Yeah. But wow, at the time, fucking heat scores. Hey, brother. We've uh, joined them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how's it going, brother? Small worlds. Hey, very small worlds. How's it going, dude? Nice to meet you. I'm, I'm Marcus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, nice to meet you as well. I think back though, like I think like I'm only 26, right? No kids. I think by the time I have kids and they're you know old enough to start partaking and they, they're in like their high school days of one, where's everything going to be? And two, I can't wait to yell at them about how privileged they are to walk down to the store. Like dad used to have to meet a guy in a back alley in a pinto. Right. It was, was shit. About, I was thinking <laughs> I overpaid. About this the other day. If you say the word like black market liquor to people, it sounds like a wow, foreign concept. It right? does. But I have a there's gotta be a like I have a sneaky suspicion that if you're like say 15, 16, 17, 18, now you're a high school kid, it's probably easier to get somebody to boot weed for you. The same way that when we got liquor, of we course didn't search out a black Absolutely. market source. No. We just got people older than us to get it for us. Yeah. So totally. if you're in that mindset now is a like you said, the next generation of people coming in, you no longer have a, to start in the black market. So when these say 15, 16, 17 year old kids are 25, 26, and you say the word black market cannabis to them, they're probably going to look at you the same way that you guys looked at me when I said black market liquor. Absolutely. Right. 
So it's a whole generation that'll never even start yeah. in that world. I'm so excited about that. Right? Like we said yeah. this too. Like it's gonna be you such never a have cool to go to a new town, feeling. you know, bump into somebody like, hey, bro, you know where I can get like a yeah. number? You know where I can get like some shitty weed off the street yeah. that maybe get robbed and burnt? You know, uh, like 15 grams around here? <laughs> Fuck. It's crazy, man. I have like a little brother that by like, he's only 14 now. So he's probably just started to dabble and probably getting his hands on it. And like, nice. no one, right? <laughs> like, I'm not an idiot. Yeah. But it's crazy. I think he definitely didn't get that the way I did it. Fucking 13. He didn't get that from no. some friend of a friend of an older brother. Like, It'll be no different. Way. And that's all thanks to social um, disobedience, not to yeah. politicians. Absolutely. Politicians yeah. did not legalize cannabis. <laughs> What are you telling me? This wasn't all Trudeau. The loud screams of the people. Well, I mean, they're gatekeepers. There's no doubt about that. And I definitely was tripped out when I saw that, like, pass the floor and like do the whatever the descent and the like, queen's chair. And, I didn't believe it. I knew I it would either. always. I was happen. like, whoa! Like, it's like you know, this is fucking kind of crazy. I always thought it would go legal one day, you know. But I thought I'd be, you know, I an old, old man. man. I thought I'd have some kids, I maybe even grandkids. Like I, well, I'm not old man, but like. What's 50? You're still middle You're so young. It's all yeah, that hash that you scooting. rub on your face. Yeah. It's all the hash. It's all the hash. It's not my face I'm rubbing it on. <laughs> well, that's that smell. It's just all pure milk. It's yeah. my feet, man. It's yeah. my feet. Exactly. It's like Vicks ah. at the end of the night. Come on. I'll put a little six star at the bottom of my feet. That's my not toe jam, to I bed. swear. Dude, fucking flying in my sleep. <laughs> flying. Well, I'm definitely ready to go eat food. Yeah? Yeah. And because we're not in Amsterdam, you guys can come. Yeah. Let's, do a, grab let's do a dab before we go. Let's yeah, do a dab okay. and go eat food. Talk yeah, about dab. that. I want I'm gonna put my mic down for a second because I'm gonna uh, Ooh. be dabbing. Ooh. And my friends, is Kelowna, BC, and they're sitting out, looking out over the lake, like Bubble Man was talking about earlier, doing dabs. Now, can you get a better life than that, my friends? Nobody in BC wants to get a phone call from some guy in Toronto. Yes, exactly. Listen, we're going to be changing how you do things over there. Following to Toronto, head office. This is how we want you guys to do it over there. <laughs> 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 I fired my entire leadership team from Toronto. Did you? Oh, yeah. yeah. CEO, CFO, CMO. Can you hear me? Can anyone hear me? Yes, Peter, I can hear you. Amazing. Oh yeah, like uh, I listening to Kelly earlier go off on the biology, like that that was music in my mind, man. That was pure love. Hello, hello. Hello, you can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can. For some reason I can't hear you guys right now. Oh, that would be why. Yeah, Mark looked like he was getting cold, not just hungry. I'm trying to get my audio working and coming through cleanly, but we'll see how it comes. Can you, hear, can can you, you guys hear me now? okay now? Yeah, you're coming clear for me. Peter's froze. Yeah. How about now? You must be far away from your router, man, because it's like the other day. You're just coming in and out, at least for me anyway. So you're just sitting there doing a bowl anyway, Peter. I mean, you're as bad as Bubble Man. Yo, yeah, he's cleaning out that fucking hitter there. Yeah. Oh, you got you gotta just love this. Like uh 
guys like how often do you get to sit in on a conversation like this it's like having the band last night it, it's that backstage look that is you get to to hear these guys and and these guys know their shit man i'm telling you they do no nothing london yeah, we're, we're picking up their mics, but we're, we've got nothing, London. Still nothing, London. How about now? What about now? There we go. Yeah. You hear me okay now? Is that coming through Perfect. fine? Excellent. Excellent. How are you doing? Oh, fantastic, brother. I woke up this morning. <laughs> Very good. Are you are you there, Peter, too? I it's a great it's a great conversation for, so far. So we're gonna go hop over and see pretty shortly and go up to uh, a gray beard session on the rooftop and set up where we were yesterday, which would be a lot of fun. That should be happening pretty shortly. Um, Josh and Kelly are out having a conversation. They're, they're out speaking at a, a thing right now. It's been a pretty wild day. How are you doing, Peter? Is Ryan there? Ryan Lee? Yeah. No. No, he's in Toronto. He's out to Fairway. Um, no, Ryan is not there. He's not here, which would be fun to have pull him into a conversation, which would be good. We've been pulling a few people here and there, and we'll be able to sneak in on the Greybeard session. I got a couple of things this time. <sighs> but it is a beautiful day here in Kelowna, BC. I'll tell you what. Thanks for joining. Oh, I wish I could. I wish I was there with you. <laughs> that would be a lot of fun. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Oh man, I, I actually thought about it, but it's my wife's birthday and I, I can't miss that and I couldn't handle the drive back to get here. No, yeah, and you know what? Sometimes it's like there was a couple people whose anniversary it was. I was like, oh, that's that's awesome to have your anniversary. Yeah, well, it's real life, and then you got to deal with that. Uh, yeah, you're all at, in Kelowna. You're what uh, six hours away, six hours away. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. North Vancouver took me about six and a half hours to get here. It didn't take all too long when it came down to it. Yeah, well, I, I'm uh, I'm just outside of Edmonton. For me to hit Kelowna is about six and a half hours. That's uh, not too bad. That's not too bad. No. Well, I used to drive from Edmonton to Vancouver. Actually, Edmonton to Chilliwack is 13 hours in a truck. And you would have to come to Chilliwack to go to sleep before we could deliver in Vancouver in the morning. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. I, I, You know, we should meet in the middle at Kootenays at some point in time yeah, that's, yeah i'd love that man that'd I'll, be a I'll very good time back. look at peter in the sun in a t-shirt i hate you a little bit right now it's nice out it's nice out but you can tell everybody's in jackets and shit i'm like, in the so, shade so. where it's slightly cool but uh in the sun the sun is blinding so yeah i, I gotta put sunglasses on or i'm gonna actually blind myself it'll be absolutely brutal well, see, the future is so bright, guys. We got to wear shades. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, we tried to get started for 1 p.m., but it didn't happen. I don't even have a boat. We did what we could, which is really fun. Where's Chris? We should bug him and see if he wants to come on and join us for a few minutes. Uh, Jay Groves, I, I go the back way, brother. I'm a truck driver. I know all the shortcuts. I'm just going to send an invite to our group chat in the back. Oh, cool. My phone's been slow as hell, though, over the last day. I'll tell you what. Okay, the sun's pretty satisfying. Oh, yeah. I, I wish I could get out in the sun. I'm stuck in my basement in the dark right now. Uh, I'm hoping, hoping for more warmth soon. I ha I saw a couple honker worms over the last couple of days. I'll tell you what, like huge worms. Mm -hmm. 
I would have emails. I live in Berlin. Are the craft and people bringing to this uh, party? Yeah, yeah. Clean, super easy, and don't like. Uh, what was that, uh, Peter? There's been a lot of extracts, is what I'm getting. There. There's been a lot of varying amount of extracts and bubble. And, and also, okay, I guess it's been a piece of bubble. But um, the, we did the announcements for it yesterday, and it was. I'll be straight up. Like I've been. I haven't smoked recreational cannabis like from the store for like years <laughs> like i haven't i don't even think i've been in one for the last year except for when they released sodas and then i was like well i gotta go try this out right so i like i had no point of reference for a lot of the brands or the brand name and stuff like that cheddar i'm i'm trying to get the signal of the invite i'm copying it clipboard you need to get in here brother and you know what else i have to do i have to set up goddamn the 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 joda herb tonight it's something. At seven. Oh, I'm going to an award ceremony too, so that'll be fun to try and multitask that. Um, <laughs> Streamyard. I just sent it. Cheddar. I just sent it on the back chat. Get in here and come say hello. Yeah, man, jump on. We've got a couple snacks coming up, and then we're gonna we'll roll upstairs and and chill out with Grey Beard and have a session up there, some extracts and stuff like that. And some more people, some Canadians. Um, and see where we go from there. I'm gonna make matcha sodas shortly. It'll be fun. Cool. Yeah, yeah. I still got to figure out how I'm gonna get cups. And it's, I've got everything sorted, but water and cups. Water I can figure out. Cups is cups is another story altogether. Yeah. But you good. So you have to move your whole rig back upstairs, tear down and and, and shift, or you got to second. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Like I can. Yeah. shove it into a brief a suitcase and cool. simply, simplify it pretty easily. Cool. Doesn't make it too challenging anyways. Going to make the Kinoa sandwich and then... Oh, where'd Peter go? Good. Uh, he's he's just uh, shut his audio and video off. I've I think got, he's probably moving. I've got some fun golden teacher lion's mane soda. That's infused, so I'm a little nervous for that one. Yes, I want. Yeah, no, you come over here. You guys come closer. So, oh, I'll get you. Everybody needs a chance to breathe, though. <laughs> We're gonna get my earphones for. Oh. Which is good. We'll let we'll let them have their lunch. I think that's pretty fair. So much running around, right? Lost your audio, London. Aha! Can you hear me now? Yeah. There you go. Wait, I love how Peter's like never go up and down. You know, like you always want to be in landscape. <laughs> Every time Peter pops, he's always. Up and down. <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to teach you that there. There we go. I was, I was trying to get my uh, these things. Yeah. <laughs> I will in a moment. Jay, what's your question? I'm right there. Going to yours. It's fairly melty and gooey. It has a really old school hash taste to it. That for being aged. Yeah, I would say so. I want to know what Cheddar Bob's uh, signature kid sandwiches are. <laughs> He's like Mommy. making lobster po' yeah, boys in the back, you know. You come to sit down? It's, it's I so this is like, still trying to find that perfect uh, taste for Jenna's taste buds, Peter? What's that? You're trying to find that perfect taste for Jenna's taste buds? No, no, no. I'm just curious what he's making his kids right now. He's he's going to go make a sandwich for his kids. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a, just a, a fishing rod and a there you joy. go. They're all like having lunch and they're like, oh, hi. everybody's trying to hide behind where the camera is to eat their lunch. I'm like, I've turned it off. You guys, you guys can have lunch. It's cool. I'm not going to be cruel. I mean, Peter would do that for sure. I, I'm not going <laughs> to. Cheddar! Turkey, cheese, and mayo. Do you cut? Do you cut the crusts off? And what direction do you cut the bread? <laughs> Because cheddar, that's not enough information. You haven't even given me like is there mayonnaise. Oh yeah, you did say mayonnaise. I didn't read the whole thing apparently. I started turkey cheese and I just threw it out. I heard. Um, you just need the mold. Age degraded. Turkey cheese. 
what you bread. make is like a peas in the pod style. So you can do like eight at once. So what American are you smoking on there, uh, Peter? Uh, this is the Australian bath of <laughs> cannabis. <laughs> smoking, yeah. <laughs> I'd be such a proud, probably have my name on. And then you did you, you, you pollinated and seeded that one, right? I didn't really get any seeds. Um, I, no, think I, I, got the, I got the pollen too late. One of the most beautiful pieces. So I'm going to do another round uh, this summer. With I've, been, and I've been throwing these around at the, the conference, which has been kind of fun. Sweet. Can you read that? I can't see what it says. Yeah, uh, it says yeah. golden. Here, I'll, I'll see if I can bulk it up. Yeah, golden that's lemon. That's see if I get the light on it. There you go. The golden lemon, FCB cunning folk. I, it's the Acapulco gold cross lemon Kush he, yeah. uh, headband yeah, that's um, so that I crossed over and I've been picking through. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, everybody gets some. So I've handed them off to like Dragonfly and everybody. Cool. To enjoy. And then I got the cover crop and the Hakuta. That's the one that got seeds at the border. Yeah, they hate, they don't fly. That one and the cover crop. Where's the one that's the cover crop? Oh, it's kind of fun. I think Cheddar Bob just answered you, London. Okay, that that's a better version of uh, his initial description of what he was making for lunch. For you. Was not that good. It's much better. Oh yeah, aioli crust is a must. Mild aged cheddar cheese, Italian baguette, herb turkey aioli. Oh, this is delicious! Delicious. Does he want to drink from his kitchen? That would be awesome. I can we do that actually? And Ken, is Peter cutting it out for you too, or is it my connection? No, it's, it's it's Peter. He's he just uh, when he's out in the yard, that happens to him sometimes. You're cutting out a little bit there. <laughs> I, I, you know what? I don't know why you had to say that you hate me. I, that's all that I heard. <laughs> like you cut everything out, then I hate you. Like I feel, I feel like I'm <laughs> uh, eating is good. Yes, excellent. I need to eat too. Which is actually. Well, wasn't that young lady behind you bringing you food yet? Yes, there's a big veggie platter now, which is excellent. And then, but I got to tear down and eat food before I go up to this rooftop session in less than an hour, which is good. So hopefully, Cheddar Bob will do a sandwich up pretty, pretty okay quickly. And maybe Chris will pop over and I can get you guys support. Otherwise, I could turn it off for a little bit and come back on, on the rooftop. Which I'm kind of fun too. Side. To make it easy. Yeah, we do part two. You can do part two. It. Yeah, we could separate it into two parts, which would be kind of fun. Let everybody have a snack, and then I'll have to attack them with yeah. the entire day. <laughs> yeah, cool, huh? Good, that awesome. I appreciate it, Ken. We got to do some. We're we're gonna we're gonna hang out. I'm gonna send you some some of those those lemon golden lemon can. Do you grow? You're growing, right? Um, yeah, I'm actually rebuilding my uh, my trailer right now. Um, so. Uh, probably about a month or two before I'm going to pop beans. But, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love that, man. I, I'd love to hook up uh, halfway. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's, that's definitely. We'll meet the Kootenays and, and oh, chatter. put together like a seed swap or a barbecue or something like that. That'd be fun, right? Yeah, cool, cool. Like a community sesh thing. Yeah, yeah, we'll definitely go. have to hook up. Uh, yeah, I, I just, yeah. <laughs> I, I won't say anything more than that. It just yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you always under promise and over deliver? Yes. And there's the cheddar bob. Hey, what's going on, London? How are you? Good, man. Good. Hungry. London is hungry. Did I make yeah. him hungry? Yes, if you get a little bit hungry. I'm uh <laughs> Thinking that we're gonna have a little bit of a snack here and then go up to Greybeard session and 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 do a theme and go up there for a little bit. Uh, and then I'm gonna serve some matcha sodas, dude. I made this matcha milk soda thing, it's ridiculous. 
absolutely delicious. You gotta make some bang, some bang lassi, some bang lassi. I d- I've never made bang lassi. I don't. Oh, it's I, basically milk and cannabis. It sounds a little bit provocative. <laughs> very, very, very provocative. Very <laughs> provocative. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. I'm just gonna keep. So, my mouth shut. um, are are you are you out in Van? Are you still in Vancouver or? No, the- we're in, we're in Kelowna. Um, in Kelowna, BC, so we're in the interior, so we're in like wine country. Okay, so cool. we, we, this would be like our Humboldt County of, of here to the Kootenays, it's kind of lake region, it's lake country. Um, so you got a lot of vineyards, a lot of vermicult, uh, a lot of viniculture, a lot of orchard, a lot of orchard, a lot of peach, a lot of apple, pear, plum, all, all the good stuff. Very cool. Um, yeah, it's it's great. The food out here is is actually really really good, and you can literally just take a boat and go from like vineyard to vineyard, and you can go eat at all these places, and they all have restaurants. And you walk up, it, it sucks because you're on a boat. And of course, the girls always dress up, so they got to wear heels. And you, but you're walking up <laughs> fucking to a vineyard, like it's like it's like a dirt path. You know what I mean? Like you can do it, but like don't wear heels. It's not the right. <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> it's like I will. I will heed that information and i will leave my heels at home i think in general if you're gonna go check out viniculture and go to these places i think it's a unless like bring a pair of heels if you want to do your special like a, shoes a but casual don't, boot a but casual yeah a boot. good a good yeah. shoe at least at least yeah, a like a shoe. like a like a trailblazing like shoe or a cross cross training you know yeah. My, hi, yeah. like a uh, mountain hiking comfortable uh, and versatile yeah exactly you're going to a farm right yeah. you know like no, you don't want to like you don't want to go Uggs. you guys are talking like practical guys <laughs> i mean you don't want to go like no. that's, that's the goal here that's, is that's to appeal to the everyday folk here is when I'm like, I bring logic into the equation. I'm like, that makes no logical sense. And then she gets mad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's, I, I'd give you the answer to that, but I. <laughs> no, Lily's sitting here. Cheddar, don't give me in trouble. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. I got you. <laughs> so I put up some some background. Yeah. No. Yeah, no. I hate, huh? your, I hate the background. I like I like dancing dancing bears, buddy. Dan- you, there's dancing bears. Okay, I'll take dancing bears. Right right there. Look at that. That's a big dancing bear. Okay, it could be worse. It could be Chris's squirrels back there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's true. Yeah, there was a lot of squirrel yesterday. There were a few squirrel sightings, to say the least. Were they crawling up his tapestries? Yeah, we'll catch up again. I would have, oh, they were sleeping on a uh, power bull. They're just looking at him funny. I don't know. Like, if, if this took the squirrel personally, I would like him to show up and like let us know what his opinions were on that specific squirrel. <laughs> Because it was, it seemed challenging. Like I'm thinking, maybe you should share a doobie or get in a conversation. You know. <laughs> so get in touch um, with your inner squirrel, Chris. I heard <laughs> you talking about. Uh, it's apparently about, a trend here. <laughs> about the way I was describing the sandwich. Yeah, and, can you, you do know, it in your I perfect was a, like, uh, main accent? Well, my perfect main accent. I don't have a main accent. I know, um, but I thought, um, like, can you, can you, can you, can you? I can't even do it. I, I really can't even do it. Like certain words, I guess I could do it, but I watched way too much Sesame Street, and I had, I had a great aunt that would like, she basically would torture me if I if I misspoke. So, you know. I, I don't have a, I don't have a main accent, which, yeah, I, which I appreciate is, which is that I don't have the accent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but for the Rhode being, Island, accent. being in the the front of the house of restaurants for twenty years, you know, I learned how to sell stuff. Yeah. So literally. Oh yeah, I got a whole bar here. You need one? That was like. What do you? Uh, turkey, iPhone. Sorry. Like American American cheese. And like a, a a loaf of bread. Okay. A, and 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 mayonnaise, like like Hellman's mayonnaise. Yeah, yeah. But you know, you can turn it into you can turn a two dollar meal into a twenty dollar meal by just the the words you use. So it's uh. Yeah. 
Well, I know like uh, I, when I grew up, you know, uh, we had, you know, the, the leftover meals and we'd actually just end up mixing it all together and we called it slum gallion. And it was just, you throw everything in and you make it taste good and everybody sits down, enjoys a good meal and you got your, your leftovers are gone and you're just next day. It's Rasta pasta. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> I let everybody know that I have a power bar here, and that was probably the worst decision I've ever made. I'm never going to be able to do this. <laughs> what do you mean you have a power bar here? All of us have cell phones and cords and other devices that need to be plugged into smoke. <laughs> oh, are you sharing? Are you, yes. are you charging well, got, them? Per, yeah, well, I've got a 100-foot cord. I've got a 100-foot extension cord and a pretty big power bar to be able to set everything up and be able to stream live as we rent do. out. You should rent out per socket. <laughs> yeah. That's not We're that idea, man. I feel like the conversation has been value enough, but uh, maybe next time I'll just try. I'll do, <laughs> hey, maybe man. I should just do that all well weekend. Fill your pockets before you leave, buddy. Fill your Everybody pockets. that isn't cool has to pay for the charger. <laughs> 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 if you're not talking on camera, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, a minute of conversation per percent of charge. You know what I mean? I got you. I played my uh, first first round of outdoor golf the other day. No was, way. I did, finally. It was about 50, 54 you, degrees. Um, yeah, I, I finished nine holes after walking. So I, I usually don't walk because I got bad knees and stuff. But uh, I had my first par of the year. And I had my first... I had my first birdie of the year and uh, a lot of firsts. So, so you had your first uh, double bogeys of the year? I did. I had a few of those. I had my first bogeys. So, yeah. But it was nice to get out and enjoy swinging the clubs. And even though I was doing it all winter, it's different playing outside. So, well, yeah, you're in nature, you're in that atmosphere, that feeling, connecting with everything around you. You can't get that in, in a house or in yeah, man, it's not that deep, Ken. It's not that deep. <laughs> oh, no. Cheddar, cheddar is I not. not, not no, I just, I just like to fucking try and hit the ball very hard and straight. <laughs> I the only thing I, for some the reason, there's always a little curve the at the end. <laughs> yeah, but it's a good curve. I, I got a nice little draw. And, you know. so. That slice only works on the dog leg, man. Yeah, right. It's a throwaway one. <laughs> are you gonna go? Are you gonna drop off and, and go get something to eat, brother? Because yeah, uh, that's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna do here. Are you guys gonna keep it going or shut it down? Or maybe I just leave you and you theater guys theater. figure that out to yourself. Oh, I just dropped in. I just dropped in to say hi. You know, keep your company. Yeah, for a why minute. don't we uh, shut it down and then ping us when you're gonna start it back up again? Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. we shall be. What like forty five oh, minutes? Yeah, we'll did, set. We'll be up on the rooftop by then. I did just order a pipe from Stan Alba. Oh my god, oh, nice! I love that guy's gear. It's so oh, fucking good. Yeah, a custom, a custom piece. He's gonna. Where is it? I'm a realist. Oh, I I met this, these guys, Burrow and Beyond. We'll go talk to them later. But they they they're gonna get us into some BC Canada glass put, artist blowers. Yeah, he's gonna put that into the stem of it. Nice. nice. And then do some other artwork around it. So, yeah. Excited. It's going to be pretty okay, sweet. Okay, so what? Uh, four o'clock then? Cheddar Bob Crest. Four o'clock. So I, I will crest, terminate. Crest of Bob. I will terminate this and see you guys later. Okay, yes? 45 minutes, brother. See you then. You be bet. safe. 